begins for the Keystone State. Who has the best ground game to win the all-important state of Pennsylvania? Is it Barack Obama with his multi-million dollar war chest? Or will John McCain's maverick tendencies play to the 12 million people who call this state of independence home? All that and more coming right up on Roll Call TV. From the CNH studios in Philadelphia, this is Roll Call with Robert Trainum. from the battleground state of Pennsylvania. I'm Robert Trainum, and as always, thanks for joining us as where we talk about all things political here on the Comcast Network. Now, between now and Election Day, you will hear about the so-called battleground states, states where both presidential candidates have determined that they must win in order to obtain the 270 electoral votes to win the White House. As one of, and one of those states is, well, you guessed it, Pennsylvania, and that's the reason why we are here. We wanted to bring the show here to really understand the issues and concerns that affect the people that live in this great state. By way of background, my friends, Democrats running for president have won this state since 1992. And the last Republican who won the state of Pennsylvania was George H.W. Bush, and that was back in 1988. Democrats also outnumber Republicans two to one. So fast forward some 20 years to 2008. Today, what does John McCain and Barack Obama need to do to win the state? And I mean tactically and also strategically. Joining us to help us answer these questions and more are two of the best political minds in Pennsylvania, Luke Bernstein, Executive Director of the Republican Party here in Pennsylvania, and Democratic Media Consultant J.J. Balaban, and in our Washington, D.C. studios, Aaron Billings, the Associate Editor of Roll Call Newspaper. Everyone, welcome. Thank you. First, uh, let me start off with you, J.J. Uh, Democrats outnumber Republicans, as I said before a few moments ago, almost two to one. If you take a look at the statistics, uh, Democrats really have about a four million, two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred registered voters. Republicans are about three million, one hundred eighty six uh, thousand. Are those numbers safe to say pretty much a pretty good cushion, if you will, for Democrats to win uh, Pennsylvania this time around? Well, I think the numbers really are one of the main reasons why Barack Obama starts this race in the lead. What you've really seen is over the past year that the race has been going on in Pennsylvania, the political map of Pennsylvania has been transformed. You've seen the third and fourth largest county in the state go to being Democratic majority counties. In one case, in the case of Montgomery County, the third largest county in the state, it's the first time basically in the history of Montgomery County that's happened. And so if you look back to 2004 when George Bush was running for re-election versus John Kerry, there were basically half a million more Democrats than Republicans. Now that's ballooned to almost a million. And that keeps, that increase in the number of Democrats keeps happening. Now why is that happening? That's happening because people are identifying with the Democratic Party. They're rejecting the Bush-McCain Republican Party. And that's very, a very ominous sign for John McCain's prospects for winning. And by way of background, when you mentioned Montgomery County, that's just outside of Philadelphia. It's a suburb. It's considered to be a collar county. And traditionally, Montgomery County always went to the Republicans. But as J.J. mentioned a few moments ago, Luke, it seems to be trending more Democrat. Would you agree with that? Well, I think in the past few elections, I think Montgomery County has always been a battleground uh, for both Republicans and Democrats. And I think in this election, the great news for Republicans, although that uh, we have a, a slight uh, voter registration disadvantage, John McCain transcends party lines, and in places like Montgomery County, Bucks County, Delaware County, Chester County, the suburban Philadelphia areas, he can really unite uh, a lot of the Republicans in that area, as well as the Democrats and independents. And I think his maverick stance on a number of issues has just trend, has continued to transcend party lines throughout his term uh, in the U.S. Senate, and I think that's really made him a very appealing candidate for us this year. And maybe in a, in a different year, if you had more of a conservative Republican running, uh, but considering that John McCain has been known as an independent and moderate Republican, I think uh, we have a great opportunity in this election here in the Commonwealth. So let me pose a hypothetical for you. If, if John McCain wins Montgomery County, could he possibly win the state of Pennsylvania? I think absolutely he will win uh, the state of Pennsylvania. And if he wins Montgomery County, I think, yes, that would be accurate. He would win uh, the state of Pennsylvania with that bump. I think Chester, Montgomery, Bucks are all pivotal counties for us to win. And uh, I think that's certainly part of the plan. Aaron Billings, I'm sorry, go ahead, JJ. I was just going to say, I mean, in Montgomery County in 2004, Republicans held a 54,000 voter registration edge. Now the Democrats have a 13,000 vote registration edge. So that's a massive shift over four years. I do agree absolutely that 
if John McCain is in Montgomery County, he will win the state. That's going to be hard for him to do. Aaron Billings from Roll Call newspaper down in Washington, D.C. What are some of your sources telling you in and around Capitol Hill? Can John McCain uh, win Pennsylvania, or do you think this is a pretty much a foregone conclusion that Senator Obama will win this state? Yeah, it's going to be a heavy lift for John McCain, there's no doubt. I mean, you guys have seen the recent polling. Obama is in the lead. Um, he does have, you know, very strong support in places like Philadelphia. If he can get out the vote and can, and can sustain the youth vote that, you know, he's been able to, uh, you know, galvanize across the country, and, and if that can manifest itself in Pennsylvania, I think Obama will have a very good shot at carrying the state and carrying the state by, you know, several percentage points. But having said that, um, you know, uh, McCain is a maverick. He does have that ability to, to cross the party lines and appeal to those independents. I wouldn't, I would definitely not rule anything in or anything out. Um, but at this point, I think people think this is Obama's state to lose. Very quickly, there are some state, or there have been some statewide Republican candidates that have won uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. Obviously, Arlen Specter, he came to the Senate back in 1980. You also obviously had John Hines, moderate Republicans. You had Rick Santorum that came in in 1994, more conservative. You also had Tom Ridge, pretty much of a moderate. So having said all that, to, to dovetail off of what Aaron said a few moments ago, do you think, J.J., that a moderate Republican, such as John McCain, at least he's perceived to be a moderate, a maverick, maverick to use Luke's term, can he win Pennsylvania? Well, I, I think John McCain has the ability. I think he's the strongest nominee who the Republican Party could have put forward. Um, and can he win Pennsylvania? Sure, this is going to be a race. But at this point, it's going to be hard for, for Luke and for other people to bring that kind of victory. For example, I, I went on the candidate's website. Uh, Barack Obama, at this point, moment, today, has 24 offices open in the state of Pennsylvania. Three in Montgomery County, actually, the county you were just referring to. Do you know how many offices John McCain has? Well, I'll give it to Luke. <laughs> well, I think we'll continue to build the organization here, but I think it, it doesn't matter what, how many offices you have on the ground. It, it matters how well you can connect to voters. And I think if you look back in the primary, where uh, the Pennsylvania voters overwhelmingly rejected Barack Obama's candidacy against Hillary Clinton, uh, he significantly outspent her here in the state, not only in terms of offices, but also in terms of TV. His gross rating points uh, were just, you know, in, in terms of market, were astronomical in, ter in, in terms of what we've become accustomed here in the state. And I think when you break that down, and it's can he identify with voters of Pennsylvania, and I think voters of Pennsylvania, whether it be suburban Philadelphia or suburban Pittsburgh, are much more in line with uh, John McCain than they are with Barack Obama. All right, very quickly, let's talk a little bit about jobs because it's the economy, stupid. That's what James Carville said back in 1992. And by way of background, it appears that it's all about the economy, it's all about jobs, not only obviously around the country with high gas prices and so forth, but particularly here in Pennsylvania. If you take a look at the numbers in terms of the unemployment numbers, uh, back in March it was 4.9 percent. This was this year. This is according to the Department of Labor. Uh, fast forward to today, or rather last month in June, it rose to 5.2 percent. So clearly jobs in the economy is a number one issue here. Specifically, what does Barack Obama have to do from a, from a job economic message to win this state, J.J.? Well, I, I mean, I think you've touched on exactly the right point. In Pennsylvania specifically, and especially outside of the greater Philadelphia area, jobs is the number one issue, especially now when people are really feeling the pinch. In terms of what he has to do is, one, he has to show that he will do things better than George Bush has over the past eight years. He will do things differently, that he has a plan which could reduce our dependence on foreign oil and eventually lower the cost of gas, that he has a plan to help people get high-tech jobs and to get the education they need to get those high-tech jobs. All right, well, John McCain was obviously in the state talking about gas prices and also talking about the economy. Let's take a listen to his, uh, his new ad that he has out uh, last week. Four dollars, five dollars, no end in sight. Because some in Washington are still saying no to drilling in America, no to independence from foreign oil. Who can you thank for rising prices at the pump? One man knows we must now drill more in America and rescue our family budgets. Don't hope for more energy. Vote for it. McCain. All right, Aaron Billings, obviously the whole message of that ad